I think we, we know that patients with KRAS mutation in general, whether it's KRAS G12C or other KRASs, uh, have a uh, more limited uh, overall survival, and they don't do as well as patients with RAS wild type, BRAF wild type colorectal cancer. And in general, in those patients, we're limited to you know, two effective chemotherapy options. Uh, these patients typically receive full FOX bevacizumab and full fury bevacizumab. And recently, there's the option of, of also uh, trifluoridine uh, bevacizumab. But in general, um, the, the median overall survival is somewhere around the two-year mark. And once you exhaust two lines of therapy responses would become really rare in third line settings. So we know it's an unmet need. Now KRAS G12C is really a subpopulation of KRAS and in colorectal cancer, uh, specifically in metastatic colorectal cancer, 4% of patients harbor the KRAS G12C mutation. And what's interesting about that mutation is that it is druggable, it's targetable. And it can be inhibited by small molecules that target the KRAS G12C, specifically the, the um, cysteine moiety or, or the cysteine on, on the KRAS G12C uh, allows the, the small molecules that are inhibitors of KRAS G12C to lodge in and bind to KRAS G12C in the GDP state, which is the inactive state, and prohibit it from being activated into the GTP state. Now that's quite good because that means you're turning off that switch. Um, and sotorasib is one of the molecules, uh, small molecules that inhibit KRAS G12C. In matter of fact, it's the first uh, covalent small molecule inhibitor um, of KRAS G12C that went into the clinic and showed clinical activity in patients with KRAS G12C mutations initially in colorectal cancer as well as in non-small cell lung cancer. So um, that 4% of patients uh, have an unmet need after two lines of therapy. And given the ability to inhibit KRAS G12C with small molecules, uh, it has become a, um, um, a goal to try to see if we can improve further on uh, monotherapy inhibition with with KRAS G12C inhibitors uh, um, in KRAS G12C uh, mutated colorectal cancers. So that's really the background. Uh, we had previously shown in a, in a phase two clinical trial that was published in Lancet Oncology that when you use sotorasib as a single agent in patients with metastatic colorectal cancer uh, whose tumors uh, harbor the KRAS G12C mutation, you do have clinical activity. However, that clinical activity was modest and the uh, objective response rate, the major regression rate was close to 10% and the, the medium progression-free survival was close to the four months mark. And, and obviously we need to improve on that further. And it, we had previously seen that uh, targeting MAP kinase pathway alone in colorectal cancer may not be sufficient. And there has been plenty of preclinical data that supports that when you inhibit EGFR along with downstream elements from EGFR, such as you know, BRAF or, or KRAS, or, um, you know, you do achieve synergistic activity. And um, um, additional data uh, have shown from the code break 101 that there is some potential added activity uh, from adding penitumumab to sotorasib. So armed with that preclinical data and the uh, safety data from code break 101, the current study that was published in New England Journal of Medicine tried to assess the benefit from combining penetumumab and sotorasib in combination uh, over the available standard of care uh, in third line settings or beyond uh, with the control arm being here, either trifluoridine to 
or regorafenib monotherapy, which were the FDA and continue to be FDA approved agents in the third line setting in colorectal cancer. So that's the background of the study here. Uh, two doses of, of sotorasib were evaluated on this study, 960 milligram, which is the recommended um, phase two dose from prior phase one studies and is the approved dose as monotherapy in KRAS G12C mutated non-small cell lung cancer and the 240 milligram dose level. And the main reason for looking at these two dose levels is that the lower dose levels were not adequately evaluated in prior studies. And, and there was always the concern that, you know, maybe we don't need 960 and, and the, the pharmacokinetics between 240 and 960 were nonlinear. And, and hence, you know, this study really wanted to kind of put to rest the question of dosing as well and to confirm that 960 milligram could be potentially better than 240 milligram. So we ended up with a study design of a randomized phase three clinical trial to prove beyond doubt here and, and with, with really um, statistical significance that the combination of sotorasib plus penetumumab um, is superior in terms of progression-free survival to what's available to our patients with KRAS G12C in a third line setting, uh, and hence the design. The study has met its primary endpoint. The primary endpoint is, here is progression-free survival. And the primary endpoint um, you know, was met for both dose levels of sotorasib at 240 milligram and the 960 milligram. So the study was designed to, to show superiority in terms of PFS for both dose levels of sotorasib against the standard of care. And here, what we've seen and is reassuring that with the standard of care is we see what we have seen in prior phase three trials. And we've seen here a, a uh, medium progression free survival of 2.2 months in patients who received the standard of care. And what we have noted is that the progression free survival is superior, whether you use 240 milligram or 960 milligram to the standard of care. At the 240 milligram dose level, uh, the median progression free survival was 3.9 months. Uh, at the 960 milligram dose level, the median progression free survival was 5.6 months, which becomes really uh, uh, much more clinically meaningful here. Uh, we have also seen differences in response rate. The, the overall response rate in the control arm was 0%. And, and now, mind you, this is not unexpected because if we look at the initial registrational trials that led to the approval of both bigorafenib or trifluoridine had been associated with response rates of 1%. But what we have seen is that at the higher dose level of sotorasib, you get a very meaningful objective response rate of 26.4%. Now, at the lower dose of sotorasib of 240 milligrams, our response rates were diminished at 5.7%. Now, even though the study was not really designed to compare in a um, uh, statistically significant way response rates um, you know, uh, between the 960 milligram and the 240 milligram, I think you can see that those, those differences are very clinically meaningful. And, and even though both dose levels of 240 milligram and 960 milligram were superior to the control arm, uh, which had only a median PFS of 2.2 months, uh, we all agree that a 5.6 months median progression-free survival is considered more meaningful than 3.9. So in my mind, even though the study did hit two uh, you know, uh, positive uh, results uh, for both arms, for both 960 and 240 being superior. There's no question in my mind here, if, if I had a choice to treat a patient, I would choose the 960 milligram over the 240 because it achieves a better response rate and it's associated with a more meaningful progression-free survival. Um, now, one thing I would like to add is that this data is quite reassuring because it's really also consistent with what's been reported uh, in a phase two trial of sotorasib and, and penetumumab, which really had very similar response rates and medium progression-free survival. So the fact that at, at the 960 milligrams, so the fact that we're seeing reproducibility along, you know, this, along the lines of this study uh, is quite reassuring. I, 
I think what's very reassuring from this study is that both the 960 and 240 milligram arms were very well tolerated. Sotoracid in general as monotherapy or in combination with benetumumab has very favorable toxicity profile. I mean, you do get a little anemia. You can see occasionally some mild uh, ASD, LT elevations, um, you know, very minimal fatigue, but very, very tolerable uh, agent. Most of the toxicities that were seen on both the 240 and the 960 milligram arms were actually related to penetumumab and were, you know, class effect side effects of penetumumab and consistent with what you see with penetumumab monotherapy. These were mostly skin side effects and, and also electrolyte disturbances, whether hypomagnesemia or acne form rash or skin toxicity. And those are manageable along the lines of supportive care that we use with penetumumab monotherapy. So, so I do think that the study gives us really uh, a lot of comfort as far as the safety of the 960 milligram dose level. And, and that's also consistent with prior data from 960 milligram sotoracib, whether monotherapy or in combination with benetumumab on the earlier trials. Uh, so it doesn't really give me any pause to use the 960 milligram if I had that uh, you know, capability. Uh, as we all know, these Combinations now are endorsed by NCCN. Uh, they are on the guidelines. And uh, I think the dose level that would be appropriate here for use in patients with KRAS G12C mutations in third line therapy for colorectal cancer should be the 960 milligram dose level along with penetumumab.